One of the greatest thrills of being a pastor is that everyone wants to tell you about the good news of what Jesus Christ has done in their lives. Just this week, Kim called me and had some exciting news. She just had to tell me about the latest scan she had and the results that she had just gotten. And folks, they came back clean as a whistle. Amen. 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 You know, under normal circumstances, she wouldn't have to go back to that oncologist and get scanned again for five years. But because she's in a study and they want to know how this investigational vaccine that she took is working, she gets to go back every year. But that's okay. You know, just this past week, I talked to Teresa and she told me that Cindy had come through her surgery and the doctor said, Everything went just fine. It was routine. It was good. No complications. Other folks call me and tell me how God is working in their lives by meeting their needs. New employment. I don't believe the excitement that people tell me. Sunday of Epiphany that deal with miraculous healing. The Old Testament is the story of Naaman, the Syrian general, who goes to Elisha to get healed. And by a miracle, dips himself seven times in the Jordan River and comes out with skin as clean as a baby's skin. Our Gospel reading it's about an unnamed leper who comes to Jesus, begging for restoration of his health, begging to be restored so that he can go back to his family and the life that he once knew. This paradox of when God chooses to heal and when he doesn't makes for a mighty theological struggle for many of us, myself included. I cried out to God this week and I said, God, I'm not seeing an epiphany message in this, these scriptures that you've handed me this week. And I cried out to him and I was drawn to a part of our gospel passage this morning that I want us to think about. I'd like for you to listen to the passage from Mark 1, 40 through 45. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. He said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. 
Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. As a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. As we continue our epiphany series of trying to find ways that God reveals himself to us, I'd like to think about this unnamed man that came to Jesus in our gospel message this morning. In our search for Jesus' healing, whatever it may be, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual, I'd like for us to put ourselves in the shoes of this leper this morning. We see Jesus right up ahead. He's within arm's reach, or at least shouting distance. And yet the first thing we should be ready to cry out, is unclean, unclean, so he knows who's coming. But then we start this little inner conversation in our minds and within ourselves, and I don't know if you do it or not, but I have inner conversations with myself all the time. <laughs> Some people say there are pills to fix that, but <laughs> I hear voices, <laughs> my own. <laughs> but let's imagine this inner conversation that I'm going to share with you. We see Jesus up ahead, we shout out, unclean, unclean, and then we begin thinking, I know that he has healed people before because not only have I heard about these miracles, I've seen these miracles happen in other people's lives. I've seen him touch other people and heal them. I know he's a man of compassion. I know he's a man of great power. I wonder if he can make me well. No, I don't wonder. I believe. I know he can make me well. I know deep within me that this man of great power can make me well. But if I go begging and pleading, I might seem a little needy and weak. That might turn him off and he may send me away. If I go up demanding, then that might offend him, cause him to turn me away. So what will I do? What will I do? How will I approach Jesus? I think I'll go and ask him to do whatever he will in my life. I will approach Jesus and ask that his will be done in my life. Instead of me telling him what my will for my life is, I'm going to go to Jesus and say, if you are willing, you can heal me. There's a lesson of great importance to be learned from our leper this morning. The leper said, if you will. If you will. If you, Jesus, are willing, he didn't demand. He didn't bargain. He just simply said, if you are willing to heal me, the leper let his healing be in the hands of Jesus. How many of us this morning are willing to let Christ be revealed to us by allowing his will to be sufficient in our lives?
being a leper, this man was taking a chance that Jesus might walk away from him as the scribes and Pharisees had done. Or Jesus might pick up a handful of stones and cast them at him, as many of the townspeople might have done. Might have called him names and said, get away from me. He was used to that. But somehow or another, he felt like Jesus was different than the others. He felt like Jesus might just be the one who could change his whole life. So he approached Jesus, not demanding that Jesus do anything, but coming to Jesus and saying, I surrender to you. If you are willing, do what you will in my life. Not my will, but your will be done. He didn't come to Jesus saying, you have to heal me. You healed this one and that one and that one and that one. Now it's my turn. You have to heal me. But he was willing to take the risk to go to Jesus that many of us aren't willing to take. In other words, he was saying to Jesus, I'm putting my whole life in your hands. Right here, right now, I'm putting my life in your hands. If you will, cure me. And if you decide that I shall remain this way, then so be it. Isn't that an act of faith, a tremendous act of conviction, an act of surrender that this leper had in approaching Jesus? Was his attitude not one that tells us something about what he had in his heart? How many of us are willing to come to Jesus with an if you will attitude? How many of us are willing to fall on our knees before Jesus as the leper did this morning and say, if you will heal me, then I will be grateful. But if healing does not come, I will still trust in you. If my prayers are not answered the way I want, I will still seek your face. If I don't get what, you're, what I'm asking for, then I will still listen to your voice and obey your command. How many of us are willing to say, if you will, Jesus? And if he doesn't, are we still willing to follow, continuing to reach out to the hem of his garment? In today's scripture, we're told that Jesus was moved by compassion. He touched the man and he healed him, but it was a 50-50 proposition that he faced in going to Jesus. There's a 50% chance that Jesus would heal him. There was a 50% chance that Jesus might have said no. But the leper had great faith in Jesus. I wonder what you and I would do in that situation. Would we dare to ask to put all of our trust in the hands of Jesus? Or would we demand and beg and plead with Jesus? We all want to see Jesus revealed to us in miraculous ways, but when our prayers aren't answered in the way that we want, are we still willing to follow and be devoted disciples? If you will. If you will. These are the words that you and I need to say to God when we come to Him in prayer if you will, period. What we're talking about is a faith with trust. Trusting in Christ to act in our lives. Trusting in Christ to act in our lives and believing that Jesus can act and trusting in Him to act in our best interest even when we don't know what that is. Can we trust that God is made manifest in our weakness and our brokenness? You know, we go to yard sales. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And we see something and it's missing. The